Hello Asha Vons, Megas here on a beautiful day in Asha. If you're brand new to the channel, we're Zoroastrians, we are the Magi. You could probably tell I'm a little excited today, something so beautiful. So the last week we've been going through the book Still Pulls of the Mind, and last night it went back into print. Uh, you know, it, it's been exactly 10 years since this came out. And I think it's so beautiful that on the 10-year anniversary, it's back in print. And, you know, still pulls to the mind. It's about living in that peaceful place. You know, we come from good spirit. We're made of good spirit. We're meant to live in peace and joy and protection and provision. And sometimes we can lose ourselves in that lion illusion. You know, when we think of mindfulness meditation, right? There's some great analogies uh, of like an ocean. A and on the surface, there can be waves breaking and, and howling winds and chaos. And But if you go under th the waves, under the water and just float, it's peaceful, right? We find that we kind of thrive in this atmosphere. We don't have to live in that chaos. Now, sometimes we choose to go in that, but we need to remember we can go to that, that peaceful place. I, I think of, you know, I live here on a couple hundred acres and I have an eagle nest and I also have a raven nest and they are so completely different. When the storms are whipping, right? I'm talking just the wind is howling and trees are breaking over and it's dark. The ravens come out and they play in it. You know, I, I've talked about it. I, I've been scared. I thought they're going to rip their wings off because it's so violent. But they're having the time of their life. Now, the eagles, on the other hand, they'll leave the nest. And you'll see them start to circle. And they'll go up above the storm clouds. They'll go up where there's no storm, right? The sun is shining. The winds are calm, right? They go to those higher realms. And... and this is what we do with still pulls of the mind. You know, a couple of different ways you can envision it. You can be down under the waves. Or you can be up above the storm. But we're in that peaceful place. And it's nothing you have to do. Right? This is something we are. This is something that we become. We return to our true nature. Right? And there's a peace in that. There's not one more thing I have to do. You know, this is just returning to that peaceful place. And it's inside of each and every one of us. We just have to remember it's there and still pulls the mind is brilliant at doing that. You know, this is the book. You know, I always talk about Asha. Uh, when, when I went to Florida and I, I did the Asha meditations with my surfer buddy that was healed from OCD. And I, I wanted to take this idea of Asha to the world and see it work in the real world, not just out in the woods. You know, but this is the book I took with me. Asha hadn't been written yet. Asha was in my heart. You see Asha all throughout this like this. I mean, I'm God's thought. I live in God's idea. That's Asha one, right? And you'll see all through this Asha. So I took the spirit of Asha, the spirit of truth that runs out the lion illusion. And, and that's what I took to Florida. But this is the actual book that I took with me to Florida and shared with my wonderful friends. Because Asha hadn't been written yet. Uh, and so we've been going through this last week. We, we've done Asha, let's see, um, six, seven, eight. And then yesterday we did two and three. Today we're going to do the healing chapters, which are four and five. Uh, so if you go to Amazon, uh, you got to put in steel pools of the mind, Winston head for it to show up. Uh, but is, again, as we leave more reviews, uh, and we start to get some traction again, uh, then it'll show up easier for people coming. But that's the job of my Magi here. Go, go still pulls of the mind, Winston head, get your copy, uh, and then leave your review of, of what this book means to you and then it makes it easier for the next ones to find thank you guys i love you so much all right chapter four um this is my magi here i i can share my stories with you you'll stay with me um 
but I, I can't talk about chapters four and five without talking about one of my heroes, T.L. Osborne. Uh, he was a healer, Christian healer, that really inspired me. And kind of a funny story. Uh, I saw he was going to be in Los Angeles, California, and I lived real close to Los Angeles, California. So he was going to be there for, was it three nights? So I, I knew I was going to be there every night, and I had to meet him and tell him what he's meant to me. Well, the first night I realized he would have everyone bow their heads and then they would take him out the back. And then when we looked up, he was gone. I'm all, oh man, I need, I wanted to talk to him. Second night I go, okay, well, I'll get him. Second night, same thing happened. I'm all, all right, I'm going to catch that boy <laughs> before he disappears. So this time, the third night, when everyone bowed their head, I was headed off to, you know, cut him off at the pass and I was going to tell him how much I loved him. And you could see the shock in the pastor's face, security's face. Uh, but you know, Magus, when I set my intention, I'm going to love you. And, uh, I, I said, sir, I'm sorry to ambush you like this, but I love you. And I needed to tell you, look you in the eyes and tell you you're one of my heroes and what, uh, just an influence you've been on my life. And I love you. And he said, come here, boy, give me a hug. And he gave me, I mean, a full on hug, not one of these side. I mean, it was just chest to chest, love, brotherly love. And I felt something transfer to me. And uh, you'll see it reflected in here. Now, now I hope I've done a proud and I've, I've built on it. You know, my message and his aren't exactly the same. Uh, and I, I think that's the heart of every good teacher. You know, even Jesus um, himself said, uh, greater works will you do. A, a, a good teacher, a good father, a good parent wants their children to do even better than them. Isn't that beautiful? That's not really what you're taught in a lot of churches and temples and synagogues. But it's the heart of the father. It's the heart of a good teacher. It's the heart of a friend. So chapter 4. Law of life. Romans 8, 2 says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. That's powerful. There are laws. And if you feel trapped in a law that you can't break out of, of sin, sickness, death, and suffering, then you need the law that is higher, the law of of life in Christ Jesus that makes us free from the law of sin and death. That's where your healing's going to come from. Ephesians 2 8 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith. The law of faith is the channel to the grace. We receive all of God's promises through belief. The law of life is the greatest promise. It unites us with God. It sets us free from sin and sin's effects, which brought discord in the world with the evil spirit, sickness, pain, hate, pride, lack, murder, and all error. Jesus has given us back dominion of our world. We can cast out the devil, sickness, lack, and whatever else is error. We can live in truth. We can live in God's reality if you can only believe. The pure in heart see God. Your mind must be pure belief. Your conscious and subconscious must be in perfect harmony with no mixture of belief and unbelief. No mixture of good and evil. A house divided against itself will not stand. You must be born of spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life. Choose life. Mark 6, 5 through 6. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. This is one of those verses that make you stop, think, and possibly reevaluate what you thought you knew 
our Lord could not do something is a shocking statement. It is not that he did not want to or that it was not his will. He could not. And so this takes us back to the law. While God is personal and loving, law is impersonal and unfeeling. And there is also the law of free will to consider. God is no lawbreaker and will not override an individual's free will. So now with a better concept of how the mind and law works, you could start programming your subconscious with thoughts of all things are possible. With God in my life, all things are possible. There was an event that really helped me to understand this. Many years ago, I was driving with my dad, and I knew for the first time I had heard from God. It's just a thought in my mind, but with authority and different from my own thought, I heard pray. So I thought, what is wrong? Is it my mom? God said, no, it's Laura. And then again said, pray. So quietly I prayed. My dad did not even know what was going on in my head. And then I got a complete peace. I remember looking at the clock to see what time it was so I could ask her what happened at that time, that God would speak to me so clearly. When I got home and told Laura what happened, she got tears in her eyes as she explained that at the time she was almost abducted while work, walking to work. She cried out on the name of the Lord and they froze in their place and she ran off. Now the one thing about this I could not understand is why did God even bother to have me pray? Couldn't he have just taken control of the situation? That is what I was taught, that God is in control. That is when I learned God works through man and through law. Man was given dominion over his world. Man makes his own world. If one chooses to make his world without God, well, I don't need to tell you. Look around at the mess. Man has been making his world a living hell. By pushing God out, man is, man is left with the opposite. An absence of light is darkness. The absence of love is hate. For it would be an abomination for light to live in darkness. It would be an abomination for love to live in hate. It would be an abomination for the good spirit to live in the evil spirit. It is impossible. It is blasphemy. It is the worst sin, for it separates you from God, truth, love, and harmony. Carnal man has been trying to put God on a continuum that he can understand. Picture a line. At one end is white and the other end black. And as you move from white to black down the continuum, the shades get darker. Well, where is the exact spot where it goes from white to black? You can't find it. It's just different shades of the same thing. Or you could look at temperature, one end cold, the other hot. Where on the continuum does it turn from cold to hot? You can't find it. It's just different degrees of the same thing. Get this, guys. God, God, God cannot be put on a continuum. His ways are higher than our ways. The good spirit is not on a continuum with the evil spirit. They are completely separated. Yet look at most philosophy, psychology, and religion. It teaches the abomination of a mixture of good and evil. I got chills. I haven't read this through in a long time. This is good stuff, guys. This is Asha. Jesus taught a house divided against itself will not stand. So awake to whom God is, he is all good and he can do no evil. His children will do the same. God is love. If you have no love, you do not have God in your life and your world will be built without God. Who could possibly live a blessed, healthy life if their idea of the highest principle is mixed with evil? Remove those false ideas today. Today is the day of salvation. God is all good. Any 
This is a, a quote from Meister Eckert, one of my favorites. Any talk of God that does not comfort you is a lie. Oh my God, guys. Are you up for chapter five? That was chapter four. Still pose of the mind, $3.83 at Amazon. Still pose of the mind. Make sure you put in Winston Head to find it the first time. Leave your review, guys, so other people can find it easier. It moves us up in that algorithm. Thank you. Are you loving this, though? My God, my God. I probably won because I've lived with this for so long. Even it was out of print. I had my copies. I had my memories of taking this to Florida. Right? This is my, I called it hermit in the city. I was going to leave the forest where I knew still pools of the mind worked. And I was going to take it to others and watch it work in their lives. And what beautiful testimonies we have from that trip. My friends, the healings. Chapter 5. Healing. Psalm 107.20. God sent his word and healed them. Proverbs 4.22, God's promises are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. Renew your mind by remembering that God introduced himself as health to the Israelites. When he spoke, I am the Lord who heals you. In the Psalms, it tells us there was not one feeble person among their tribe. And that was under the old covenant. Hebrews 8, 6 says we have been given a better covenant with better promises through Jesus. Jesus said, I came down from heaven to do, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. That's John 6, 38. You have to know God's will in a matter. In Mark 1, 40 through 41, the outcast leper who didn't know God's will on the subject of healing said, if it is your will, you can heal me. Jesus answered, I will. It was his will. Of the multitudes who came to Jesus, he was the only one who asked, if it be your will. Everyone else knew and Jesus quickly showed his will. In James 5.14, James asked, Is any sick among you? Matthew 12.15, Great multitudes followed him and he healed them all. Right here you're getting the anyone. All. It is his will to heal anyone and all. Matthew 14.36, As many as touched him were made perfectly whole. Matthew 8.16, and he healed all that were sick. So again, what is the difference between the town where Jesus could not do any mighty works and these multitudes that were healed? It is belief. It is law. Jesus is willing. Look inside yourself. Is there unwavering faith in the redemptive work of Christ? The words, whoever and whoever will, are always used in his invitation to salvation. Just as the words, as many, as, everyone, all, and any, are used for the invitation of healing. The healing covenant has three parts. Divine healing, when God makes a sick body well. Divine health, when there is no need for healing, for you walk in divine health and divine life. When your soul is in union with God and you become a partaker of his life. For the law of life has set me free from the law of sin, sickness, and death. Oh, powerful, beautiful words. Can you feel the word in the words? My friends, the life, the love, the truth, the light, Jesus. You know, this reprint I'm dedicating to Jesus and to Mother Mary, we worship you. 
We praise you. We thank you. Be honored in this book and these words. Let it be. Beautiful Magi, I love, love, love you.